Hello, thank you for viewing this video. This will be a source code walkthrough of the game Bar Balance. First of all, I'm going to take new build and explain each and every function to you. So I'll be making a new build and we will be going, uh, I will be explaining it after that what this game is doing in the editor. This is a new build and I'll continue the video after we are after after the build is made and we can play at least a game as the build has been made now I can go ahead and show the game so the objective of the game is is to balance your character and make sure that he or she does not fall so the basic functions of the game include uh, changing the avatar and also creating private rooms or you can join a random room if you want to so right now we're going to actually go ahead and uh, we're going to and we're going to actually uh, select a random room for now and um, we'll connect and I'll show the features Okay, so now we're connected. You can see that players in lobby is two, and the number of players over here is two as well. There, are the two players spawned, and the objective is to balance the character. I'm just going to actually make my character fall on the Android phone that I have, so that we can actually load on, load the, uh, load back to the main menu. Okay, so that is basically the game. You have to balance your character and make sure that he or she does not fall. Anyway. So this is how the game, uh, this is, these are the main features of the game. First of all, this has been connected to your account. So whatever ads run, the revenue will be on your account. So auto loaders is basically just a small script, which is handling the, handling all of the keys or, or the save keys in the game. These are the keys, player username, player number key, player number, player avatar. Then you've got room keys right over here. These are for the private matches. Whenever you give, uh, whenever you, whenever you type in a room ID, this is where the room ID is saved. And then in the awake function, we are basically initializing the keys. And this is, these are some other values for the private, uh, these private room match room key here. This is the random number room. Uh, uh, this is for the random room number, and this is the key for the private room number. And uh, this is where we set this. And this, these are just the auto loaders that that are loaded when the game boots, and they remain consistent even after you close the game. They will still remain. This is the main camera, which is the main camera in this scene. It has a starting resolution script, which is just, um, just, well, setting the resolution of the game. We have got a UI uh, parent, and we have script, a script called uh, UI on enable, which is basically disabling the text, info text, that uh, there was a bug in this game where you could actually see the number of players that are in the room. So this script is to handle that. So whenever the player comes back to the main menu, the script is making sure that the player does not see any of the text that uh, can actually be considered a bug. So the script is for that. Other than that, we have uh, this is the UI for the uh, private room. You can see it's over here. Then we have for the private uh, create room. We've got private join room here. We've got UI settings here and we have a uh, tutorial canvas here which is for the tutorials so this is on by default because it's the first first um, this is the first screen that the player sees we have an event system which is unity's own event system this is the photo on lobby script this one is big so this is big too this is the multiplayer settings um, script and this is the ui handler we'll first take a look at that is simpler. These are the variables, the various screens that are that are in the game right now. 
This is Avatar 1 controller, Avatar 2 controller, and Avatar 3 controller. These are the characters that are in the game. And this is where we've stored all of the screens as variables and we also have the music slider which is handling the music that is in the screen uh, on the in the game sorry the unity functions are the standard functions and we are also adding this as a callback target so that uh, in order to the photon network so that we can we can use some of the photon features that are actually the photon network actually gives us this is a very important coroutine, it's called init ads, which is actually initializing the ads on your account. This is your ID for the ads. So this is this is one of the most important functions in the entire game. And over here we're actually setting the music value and we're also setting some of the avatars in the game at start so that uh, we don't actually end up loading a different avatar than the one that we've selected. In the region for ads, we're just initializing the ads, and uh, that's what we're doing. So we can take a look at menu, uh, main menu buttons. There's just one button, which is the quit button, and this just uh, quits the application. So there you go. And we've got avatar control region. This is for the change avatar. So the avatar changes based on what avatar we have. So if we have avatar one, we'll switch to avatar two. If we have avatar two, we'll switch to avatar three. And if we have avatar three, we'll switch to avatar one. In the private match buttons, we have got the various buttons to control the uh, private match features. Uh, we can also, uh, so I was actually misclicked on my editor, so that's why it's stuck. We have a create room button. We have got a private match button clicked. We have got private match, uh, private match screen close button, which is to close the private match screen. Then we have got join uh, room button clicked, which is basically for the private match join room button. So if you're joining a room, you will basically be using this function right here. In the settings menu button, we just have the slider. We have the tutorial screen button clicked. We've got the settings button clicked and we've got the settings close button clicked. Uh, I believe the tutorial canvas is being handled somewhere else. I'll check that uh, for a while. So we'll close all of these scripts and I'll go back to the editor. Uh, I'll go over to music. Oh, your music object is just a just a s very small script that is handling the music that is in the main menu as well as in the in the game. So this is just a switch statement. It's just the uh, audio based on which scene you are in. So I'll close the script. I'll go back to the editor, and I would like to show you the tutorial. There it is, the tutorial canvas. So this is the these are the various tutorial screens in an array. Then we have the Unity functions over here, and then we've got Screen Next button. So you can see when the first screen, uh, the next, uh, the, the next button on the first screen is clicked. We just turn off the first, we turn off, turn off the first screen, starts at zero, and then we, um, then we turn the first one on. Then we have got we turn the first one off, then the second one on, and then the second one uh, when the third screen basically array start at zero in programming so two is basically three so this is the third screen next clicked and we will actually uh enable the ui the main ui after the third screen has been clicked this is the one of the biggest uh, scripts in the game and this is the photon lobby script these are a lot of variables, but these are basically the variables for the lobby uh, lobby buttons in Infotex. These are this is the these are vari variables for the private match room creation buttons. These are the variables for private match join room buttons. So uh, the object components are here. This is this is a reference to the audio source. This is just a click clip. So whenever you click a button, this clip plays. Uh, we are storing these over here. Uh, these are the variables for that. And this is to create the lobby which players can join. This function is connecting the uh, player to the to the Photon network. And uh, it's written reconnect to Photon servers because the game always reconnects when you return to the main menu. Once we connect to the main menu, we want to enable some texts, and this is where we're enabling the connection wait text, uh, the begin search text, and the begin private search text. So that's where it, that's where it spawns, or that's where it's activated. Over here, we are just creating the room. We are, uh, we are creating the room here. 
So this is a random room creation or an attempt to create a random room. This is to create a private room and you can see that over here we are taking the private room name. This is the input that you give the number that you give on the screen. It is converted to a string and passed as the room ID. In the join room, uh, in the join private room, we are actually just taking in the input that the player gives and making the player join that room. So you can see over here that if we go to uh, no, sorry, this is just for dot join room auto. Yeah, this is it. This is how we join a room. So that's how you join a room by actually putting in the ID over here. This is done, of course, in code, so the actual player can't see it. Then we've got on begin search click. This is this is the code to search for a random room, and that's basically it. Okay, so the next most important script in the game is the room lobby script. So again, this will have a lot of variables. Most of them are just uh, for controlling the amount of players that are in the room, and uh, these are this is where we store the variables. And this is these this these variables are all the info texts that you see on the screen. Uh, this is this is for the pun callbacks or pun callbacks, and these are for the control of the uh, room so these are very not very standard but standard functions for your game uh, you can see players in lobby when you see on the game players in lobby this is the code that is actually running and we're checking how many players there are and if there are players then we if there are two players then we start the game after a countdown which is hidden which the player can't see when we join a room, we want to check whether there are enough players to start a game. If there are not, we'll wait for players. And we've got non entry room function, which is going to uh, be for the master client, which is if you are the, if you are the master client, as in, as in we are hosting the game, you want to see which player connected. And um, if a player has connected, we want to actually increment the value of players in room. And once that happens, that means that if we have one player in the room and if another player joins, then the number becomes two and the game is ready to load. We also have an on left room function, which is basically uh, for uh, for when a player leaves the room. So we want to make sure that the lobby, if there is a lobby and it has zero players, we want the game to know that it has zero players, so it destroys the lobby so that nobody else can join it. Then we have uh, then we have on player left room. So if another player joins and he leaves the room, then we are going to decrement the value of players in room to make sure that the game doesn't load without any players. We have a start game function, which is basically just going to start the game and go to the multiplayer multiplayer scene. We have a restart timer uh, function to restart the timer if a player leaves, and then we have got an on on finish loading function, which is for the uh, when the scene finish finishes loading we are going to create the player which you see on the screen I'm gonna go to over to this function which is also an important function because th in this function we are actually going to create the player which uh, the player is in our prefabs folder which I'll show you show it to you right now which is here let me just show it uh, there it is uh, on the project and in the resources just close all of these folders there it is this is the player avatar and the player uh, the photon network player this is the player that loads anyway so we're going to close that and uh, basically this is all of all of the all of the variables and the scripts for this scene I'm going to go over the next scene we have got a few scenes here. We've got a wait scene one, which I believe is not being used, but I'll check it. This is the multiplayer scene, and over here we've got a game setup script, which is basically just the spawn points for the various uh, for the various uh, for the various players. So two players, and this this script is storing the spawn points. Okay, so now we're going to go over to master control. This is the master control uh, uh, script which is for the master player, uh, master master server or the master client. So this is actually handling how many players there are in the level. And then we have got uh, turn variables over here, which I'm going to close right now because we don't want the screen to be filled. 
and then we've got unity functions over here which are basically then we are adding the this script as a callback target and then we've got some RPCs to make sure that the game loads properly over here we are synchronizing the player turn number and the start time number so that no, like one player does not load before the next before another then we have got a starting uh, starting RPC to make sure that the game starts at 4 seconds for both players then we also have a start timer over here which is uh, uh, this is an I enumerator which is going to check how many players have loaded in the screen if the if the if the player count is less than uh, is less than two which is less than one basically means that it has to be well less than one which is zero so we are going to continue uh, looping through this until we have until we have the this right number of players so at the moment this is actually going to continue searching for players until uh, we have got two players all right so we have got a while start time greater than uh, minus 0 0.5 so unless this we unless this is done like this this function this function is basically making sure that the game loads at the correct time so this is a very important function it is called start timer and this will keep running until uh, two players have been loaded in the game by the way there's another thing too uh, players dot length it ca it can be zero and can be one. Okay. All right. We have got find players. So this is uh, this is to find the players that are in the room. This is being used by multiple multiple. Uh, this is being used by multiple functions. Then we've got another finds player a find player uh, function which is for the local client. And then we've got master client change turn, which is changing the turn. Uh, we had a turn system, I just didn't rename it. But this is basically setting one to heavily drunk and the other one to slightly drunk. This is the function for that. We also have another master client change turn, which is again, I didn't change the name so that I don't mess up the code. But this is actually when the shot button is clicked. So this function runs when the shot button is clicked to turn, uh, to change one player from slightly drunk to heavily drunk. And these are RPCs to make sure that no player is missed. Another RPC for checking which player is set to drunk. And then we have got another RPC to make sure that you set or change turn from button. So what happens is that when you click the shot button, we check how many players there are in the scene and then we execute a set to drunk function which is part of the control script which I haven't shown you yet. Then we've got an RPC uh, game over scenario one, which is for I believe it is for yeah when one of the player falls. The second game over scenario is when one of the player disconnects. So these are the two game over scenarios. The last uh, most important script, which is which should be covered, is basically the uh, the resources and the resources and the player avatar. So this is the control script for the player avatar. So over here we've got. This is basically the set to drunk uh, function, which is basically going to be uh, the RPC to set the player to set one player to the to the drunk state, which is a requirement. And then we have got uh, components and different variables for the player. We also have these animator override controllers to load the correct uh, player like the to the two males and the one female so this is there uh, then we have all of these variables which are for the local player so that the other player so that the local player can see the foreign player we also have tutorial screens and canvas which is not being used anymore this is this was for when we were actually showing the tutorial canvas uh, in the previous build so I left it as it is because I did not want to mess up the code if I change this it could have caused bugs we've got on destroy or enable which is just going to um, set the on destroy is going to call the master client game over scenario 2 and on disable is also going to call master client uh, ma master client game over scenario 2 which is for disconnects so once we have uh, this is to make sure that one one player leaves the game over scenario is called 
in the start function we're destroying the uh, the camera and all the other variables which can, can be visible on the local player but since two players are loading we want to make sure that only the local player actually sees th what he needs to see the rest of things the rest of the things are destroyed because we don't need them then we also are setting some other variables over here and we also have RPCs to set the state of the avatars. In the fixed updates, we are running uh, a fixed update for the RPC player states and the RPC for points, which is not being used. This is not being used anymore because the point system is not in the game anymore. We are streaming the variables across the network so they are consistent among all players. We have got unparent name canvas, which is going to unparent the name so that it doesn't rotate with the camera. We have got a I enumerator to leave the room. We have got an RPC start, which is going to basically start the start the initial variables and then uh, and will set the variables for the for each avatar at the start. We also have this function, which is not being used anymore. This was for the tutorial screens. We have a uh, p. Uh, we have a RPC avatar on start, which is loading the correct character. The character that you've selected will be loaded over here. Then we also have RPC game over on death, which is basically going to call the game over when one player falls. And this is just uh, going to actually uh, call the various uh, functions. And uh, this is actually also linked to the end screen, which you see whether you won or lost. So this is where we are actually setting the scenarios for win or losing. And this was the function I was talking about that to in order to show that uh, the end screen, I need to actually pass on some of some functions like these, so that the uh, the next screen knows why which avatar fell, how whether the if the whether the player won or the player lost. So. This is the this is the function for that, and then we have got call game over on disconnect, which is going to uh, basically tell the local player that the other player uh, has uh, uh, wh whether the other player has fallen or you yourself have fallen. So if you have fallen, your state is dead. But if you haven't fallen, then you won the game. So this is for that. Then we've got an RPC uh, RPC player states uh, function, which is a switch case for drunk, slightly drunk, dead, waiting, and targeting. Uh, drunk is when you're slightly drunk. Uh, drunk is when you're heavily drunk. Basically, should have been heavily drunk, but when the game, the the first few builds didn't have a heavily drunk and a slightly drunk function. It just had a drunk or non-drunk function. So I didn't change it again just to make sure that I don't mess up the code. Instead, I did a slightly drunk and drunk um, uh, state. The drunk state is when you're you're heavily drunk, and the slightly drunk state is when you're slightly drunk. This is dead when you have fallen. This is waiting, which is basically when the players spawn. They're in the waiting state, so they are static. Then you have got targeting. This is when you're targeting the player in the green in the green area. This is not being used anymore. This is a ray that is shot when the player is in the in the green area for a long time so a ray is shot which selects the player that is in front of uh, that is in front of the ray that's how we're selecting the prayer this is the rpc drunk bar handler which is basically changing the value of the bar based on uh where the character is tilting so that is a math mathematics function this is a huge mathematics function for that then we've got rpc uh slightly drunk so there is no random force when you're slightly drunk so this has been commented out uh, this is RPC slightly drunk, so this is where we're adding relative torque based on input dot acceleration, which is the tilt of the tilt of the player. This is tilt force to apply, and this is the force mode. This is to, uh, this this these statements are to check the angle, and if the angle is greater than 40, it means we have fallen. This is for the points, but it's not being used anymore. This is for the angle, so if the angle is less than 20, that means we're in the green area and we are going to uh, start the timer. So that's for that. The RPC drunk tilt, it is a mostly the same function that is above except that we have random force here. And the uh, force is actually slightly higher, so the random force is slightly higher over here because we are in a heavily drunk state. 
Then we've got a player state to dead, which is basically changing the the local player state to dead if he or she has has basically fallen. Then we've got an RPC set to ground state, which is a, another huge statement of huge bunch of statements, which is just checking uh, whether the player is drunk, and if he is drunk, then we'll ignore it. If he's not drunk, then we are going to set it to drunk because the shot button is clicked. And then we've got uh, this. This is basically to tell the local player that the other player is heavily drunk. So that's th really the the core features. Of c there are more features, but uh, it's going to like the the video. These are the main features that I believe you should know. And if there is a if this source code needs to be taken a look at it is it is highly advised to take a look at this video before you actually take a look at the source code so you know what's going on thank you